Faith in the Fog is based on an excellent sermon series presented by Pastor Lance Lowell of Neighborhood Church in Modesto, California. Pastor Lowell gave me his sermon notes and encouraged me to design a video series. The episodes that you will see are a collaboration between Pastor Lowell and myself. I hope you enjoy this production. There are not many things more devastating than having our biggest personal failure stare back at us. Most of the time, our first reaction is to separate ourselves from our failure, to deny the severity or even to deny our responsibility in it. It is just too difficult to look at our failure head on. But on rare occasions, we have no choice, especially those moments when our failure hurts a family member, co-worker, or church member. In those moments, we are forced to look at our failures in the face. We have no room for escape or denial because the one wearing the hurt is standing right in front of us. That was Peter's experience. Let's read. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Peter was overconfident that he had the courage and ability to withstand persecution and threat. But Jesus saw the true heart. Peter blinded himself with pseudo-courage and bluster to the point that he set himself up for a fall because he put his faith and trust in his own abilities, not in the person of Jesus Christ. Even after being warned by Jesus, Peter thought he was not capable of committing such a painful failure against the one he loved. Yet, within less than 12 hours, Peter had to stare his failure in the face. In Peter's situation, a spiritual fog of failure formed rapidly, and confusion and fear flooded his mind. Peter knew that he denied Christ and failed the test. He was overcome with sorrow and grief to the point that he isolated himself from the other disciples. What is failure? Is failure the same as losing? We will seek to answer these questions in this episode. According to Webster's Dictionary, Failure is an omission of occurrence or performance, a failing to perform a duty or expected action, a state or inability to perform a normal function, a fracturing or giving away under stress. A failure to perform a duty or expected action, a fracturing under stress, this is a perfect description of the failure we see in Peter. He failed to fulfill his promise to Jesus because he fractured under stress. 
Failure comes about the same way for us. We make promises or set goals that we cannot possibly meet. Therefore, we fracture under stress. There are many motives for failure, but let's focus on four reasons. Our desire for a certain outcome blinds us to the danger that threatens to harm us. We overestimate our capacities and we do not put up appropriate safeguards to protect ourselves. We usually underestimate the challenge or obstacle. We cave into fear, compromise, temptation, or distraction. We attempt to live and operate our life on our own, with no accountability or support in the faith. We can see all four of these reasons in Peter's denial. He was rash and impulsive, and overcome with preconceived ideas and actions. Peter saw in himself the bravado to stand with Christ even to the point of death. But Jesus knew that Peter underestimated the challenge and would fail out of fear and compromise. Did Peter fail completely? Did God reject Peter? Did Jesus open a path of restoration? We can find the answer to these questions in the narrative of John chapter 21. The scene is this. Peter and the other disciples return to Galilee to pick up their former trade as fishermen. I guess the mission is over. All the disciples abandoned Jesus, not just Peter. Would Jesus reject them? What now? After Peter's failure, his relationship with Jesus was strained at best, if not broken completely. Peter did not have an answer to his dilemma. He needed to talk to Jesus alone, but the opportunity had not arisen since the resurrection. Peter is behaving oddly. It's obvious that he suffers from a troubled mind. While Peter isolated himself in his thoughts and pain, he noticed a stranger standing on the shore. The stranger inquired about their morning catch, but they had none. We all know the miracle. The stranger encouraged the disciples to throw their nets back into the sea, and they caught a large catch of fish. Peter and John suspected that the stranger was Jesus. Therefore, Peter jumped into the water and swam ashore. This was his chance to privately speak to Jesus. Peter needed an answer to the burning question tormenting his soul. Will Jesus receive him back? We have no record of this private moment between Jesus and Peter. But when the disciples reached shore, they saw a fire of burning coals with fish on it and some bread. The context of John chapter 21 indicates that the disciples were still not totally sure if this stranger was Jesus. 
This stranger seemed like Jesus, but his appearance was different. The last two times Jesus appeared to the disciples, they saw him resurrected and glorified. The glorious light of God chased away the darkness and the cold. Clearly, a miracle happened with the fish. This stranger must be Jesus, but his appearance is different. He is warm and inviting. A warm invitation from Jesus to share a meal together greeted the disciples. We have no record of idle breakfast conversation. It's possible that the meal was shared in silence, the atmosphere heavy with sorrow and regret. Each of the disciples fled from Jesus during the time of his greatest trial. Peter even denied knowing Jesus three times. A great chasm of guilt separated the disciples from Jesus, especially Peter. Something must be done. Finally, Jesus breaks the silence and privately spoke to Peter. Let's read. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. What is important about these simple words? Jesus took Peter back to his bold statement at the Last Supper that he would never deny the Christ. But Peter denied the Christ on three occasions. He even called down curses on himself as proof of his testimony. Peter knew the seriousness of his failure because he invoked the anathema curse. According to rabbinic Hebrew, the anathema curse was a call for excommunication from Jewish society. Peter understood that he was an outcast from Jewish society because of his curse. What hope would there be for him? How does he repair such damage? On his own, Peter could not repair the damage. Jesus does not let failure go without an opportunity for reconciliation. Now, Peter, since you are on the other side of failure, do you still love me? Jesus posed the question to Peter three times in order for him to affirm his love and to repent of his denials. Let's glean some sound wisdom from this narrative. Recovery from failure never comes without a conversation with Jesus. Repentance is necessary for forgiveness. We must accept responsibility for our actions and our failures. American author and motivational speaker Zig Ziglar made the following statement. Your failures won't hurt you until you start blaming them on others. How true are these words? Our failures will constantly plague us as long as we blame others for our actions. Repentance and reconciliation can only occur when we accept responsibility for our own actions. 
As long as we look to place our sin and failure on other people, we will not repent. And the fog of failure will constantly hang over our heads. In Acts chapter 3, Peter preached to the crowd that we all need to repent and turn to God so that our sins may be wiped out. He emphasized that repentance was needed in order for us to bask in the refreshment that comes from the Lord. How did Peter know the importance of repentance and reconciliation? The answer is simple. Peter experienced the refreshment that came from Jesus during their quiet interlude on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus is waiting to lead us back into unhindered relationship with Him and His body. To walk out of the fog of failure, we must acknowledge our personal responsibility in our failure and repent. Orson Martin, and an American inspirational author, wrote, No man is beaten until his hope is annihilated, his confidence gone, as long as a man faces life hopefully, confidently, triumphantly, he is not a failure. He is not beaten until he turns his back on life. After failure, we tend to interpret the failure as an indication of value and self-worth. One of the biggest fears we have is failure. Afraid, we won't succeed if we try something new. Fear that we might never make it doing what we are passionate about. And fear of failure should we follow our hearts. The fear of failure can harden our hearts to action. The spiritual fog created by failure can distort the image we have of ourselves. Failure can unleash horrible emotions. We can stumble with self-rejection or be consumed with self-doubt and low self-esteem. Let's return to John chapter 21. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dare ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Let's put ourselves in Peter's shoes. What emotions do we think Peter struggled with? Did he wrestle with going back to his old life as a fisherman? Is this the reason why Peter climbed aboard the boat to help with the nets? If we were Peter, what would we expect from that day on the beach? He expected to be treated like the failure he was. Deep in his heart, Peter knew that Jesus would reject him. How could he be part of a movement that would shake the world when he was so weak in himself? The rejection Peter feared the most did not happen. Jesus warmly accepted and welcomed him around the fire. It would be around this fire that Peter would realize that he was still valuable to the Lord. Why does failure mess us up so much? Because we feel that we should have known better. We feel like we didn't live up to expectations. We feel stupid. 
we must realize that good intentions are not enough to prevent failure. We are not perfect beings. We have shortcomings. We experience fear. We struggle to trust. There is a Japanese proverb that says, Fear is only as deep as the mind allows. Jesus was showing Peter that failure did not determine his value. Failure can be a growing experience. It can be a maturing opportunity. Peter's betrayal became such a growing incident. During the Last Supper, Peter projected a boastful self-image of loyalty and sacrifice. Jesus could see the pride in Peter, and he warned him about his coming denials. This Passover meal would be the last meal Jesus would share with his disciples just prior to his crucifixion. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. One would think the disciples would remain silent so they could hear the last teachings of Jesus. But this did not happen. According to Luke, the Passover observance began with strife and contention among Christ's disciples as to which one of them should be accounted as the greatest. Imagine the topic of conversation at the Last Supper was an argument about who was the greatest in the kingdom. This argument would also include Peter. Self-centered, prideful boasting would not last the night, and the kingdom of darkness would sift each disciple for their true motive and courage. Peter was not a man without courage. He was willing to fight alongside Jesus in bloody combat to prevent his arrest. Peter vowed that he would die beside the Christ. Therefore he drew a sword and cut off the right ear of Amalchus, the servant of the high priest. It is here that the failure of Peter began. He acted impulsively without the direction of Jesus. Peter was determined to show his resolve to fight for the Christ. But his problem was that his actions were contrary to the teachings of Jesus. Jesus stopped Peter and healed Malchus. When it became evident that Jesus would not resist arrest, then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Peter also fled because he could be charged with attempted murder and treasonous insurrection. A death sentence awaited him. It is sad, but the disciples spent more time at the Last Supper posturing for a position than listening to the final instructions of Jesus. He warned the disciples that when they entered Jerusalem, he would be handed over to the Sanhedrin for trial, then executed, but rise from the dead on the third day. Failure can have positive consequences. For Peter, his betrayals produced a crop of humility. He was a broken man. Failure is close by 
when Jesus' instructions are not followed. So many of our failures have this one action at its core. Jesus wanted more from Peter than reconciliation. He wanted Peter to grow from his failure. Peter's boast would become a reality because he would die like the Christ, being crucified upside down by the Romans. Jesus wanted Peter to grow from his failure. He wanted Peter to trust and obey out of love and faith, not jockey for position or title, but to deny himself take up his cross daily and follow him. Could we do that? Give up all our power and position to follow Christ. Many of the failures we experience has this one shortcoming as its root. The fog of failure will always distort the truth when we jockey for position in the kingdom of God. So, I'm to be a fisher of men? I don't think so. I failed the Christ. My mission is over. I no longer have a purpose in life. These could have been the thoughts of Peter as he grieved his betrayal and failure. Peter knew what his assignment was, but his failure caused him to step away from his calling. Peter was taking himself out of the game. Jesus could see in Peter his defeated attitude. He was broken. The three reaffirmations Peter gave Jesus kindled the fire once again, and Jesus refreshed his purpose in life. Peter still had his calling and mission. God does not choose us because of our capacities, talents, or resources. He calls and anoints us based upon our character and identity. Failure will happen because failure is part of our human condition. Kenneth Boulding, the British economist said, Nothing fails like success because we don't learn from it. We learn only from failure. Peter's failure is the very thing that prepared him for his true mission in life. He learned from it. He grew from it. Without this failure, Peter would never have achieved his goal of being a fisher of men. It was his failure that taught him the true cost of serving Christ. Peter was now ready to dedicate his life to the service of Jesus, and he was ready to die beside the Christ. Failure doesn't have to become a fog that distorts our life. It can become an opportunity for new spiritual growth. Failure is not the falling down, but it's the staying down that determines failure. Peter's failure would become life-changing one way or another. Peter could have wallowed in his failure and he would have walked out of history. But he chose to embrace the restoration of Jesus and his life was changed forever. Consider the sage wisdom of professional golfer David Ferrety. It's how you deal with failure that determines how you achieve success. The fear of failure 
can become a powerful voice in our lives. It can freeze us in our tracks and paralyze our faith in Christ. The fear of failure is a horrid tormentor. It controls our thoughts and actions. The sad truth is, we can become safe in our fear. It can become our safe place where we don't risk failure. Remember, fear is only as deep as the mind allows. As long as we learn something new and we grow from our failures, then they are never truly failures. They are only learning opportunities. The author H. Stanley Judd said, Don't be afraid to fail. Don't waste energy trying to cover up failure. Learn from your failures and go on to the next challenge. It's okay to fail. If you're not failing, you're not growing.